Welcome to Calvary Community Church. We are so excited. Just a few more Sundays online, and then it'll be our church's 47th birthday on June the 7th, and we're looking forward to a great day and planning some really great things. You know, I'm so pumped today to share with you some really good news because we've just been bombarded with bad news. I mean, from all sides, from the economy to people losing their jobs to people getting cabin fever from being in the house all the time to other sickness with the virus and, uh, oh my, beyond that. And it's just lots and lots of bad news. And I would encourage you to not, not watch the news too much, but to look into the good news of God's Word, His book. It's full of good news. He said, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory. God gives us victory. And so um, victory in this life and then ultimate victory. How wonderful. You know, the good news is that God said he's got a wonderful future out ahead. I has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. God has prepared some things that are beyond what I could even begin to describe to you. And the Bible gives us a slight glimpse of them, for the Spirit has revealed them to us. And But it is amazing what God has done. And he's so excited about what he has for you in the future, because he's your Heavenly Father. You know, I remember when my kids were little, I was really excited. The one thing I got excited about was preparing vacation for them. Vacation was always special. I mean, we just... I remember one summer, we just... We just didn't have two dimes to rub together. And I told Gail, we still need to get away. We just may not have the money, but we got to get away. And so somebody in the church loaned us their tent so we could camp. And somebody else in our church had a cabin out west in western Nebraska on the lake, an A-frame cabin, and said we could stay in their cabin. And so we that was our vacation and I still remember saying to Gail I wonder if the kids are going to have fun is this and you know what they had so much fun camping and then we were in this little cabin and they just we spent three days there and it came time to leave and they I mean they wanted to stay longer they just loved it it was it was a tremendous time then then I remember one time when you as a church sent us to Disney World in Florida. Now that was a dream trip. I mean, our kids had never seen the ocean. And we we uh, we had an old conversion van and we drove a, drove this old Ford conversion van all the way to Florida. And I still remember we drove all night. We were so excited about getting there in the and we got there in the wee hours of the morning, pull up on the beach and slept a few minutes, and then the sun came up, woke the kids up, and said, look out the window. And they looked out the window and saw the ocean for the first time. They were so excited. They were out of that van, <laughs> and their mother said something about, don't get your clothes wet. Oh, those were vain words. They were in the ocean. I mean, they loved it, and uh, just a great time. And so, you know, the fun things, the planning those things, and I, I, I mean, as a dad, I loved planning a great time for the kids. But my Heavenly Father is even more so that way. He is so excited about planning a great future for, for you. As he said, it is beyond what can, we can even comprehend in our hearts. And so Jesus said, I'm a king, and I'm going to have a kingdom, and you will be a part of it. What a claim. There are four things about this kingdom that I want you to see. I want you to see what it is, and then I want you to see when it will be, how long it will be, who will be involved. What is this kingdom? Well, Isaiah mentions this kingdom. He said, and they will hammer their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, and never again will they learn war. That verse is on the cornerstone of the United Nations building. And it has been the dream of men ever, uh, ever since, down through history, uh, that we would have peace and prosperity and no war. And 
Uh, and, and this is our dream for our children. I mean, we end our nurseries rhymes with, and they lived happily ever after. That's our dream, a world of peace. And, and God describes that world. In fact, not only peace among people, but even among all of his creation and, the, and even the animals. Isaiah 11, the wolf will dwell with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little boy will lead them. I mean, these are amazing pictures. I mean, the cow and the bear will graze. And the young uh, and, and their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. I mean, now if you see a lion and a lamb together and you look away and look back, the lamb's probably missing and the lion's licking his chops. I mean, that's not the world we live in today. We live in a world of violence and yet he's describing a whole nother world and a little child shall lead them. I mean, it, this, in this world that God is describing for us, can you picture it? A little boy will come to his mother and say, Mama, the lions are in the backyard again. Can I, can I go out and play with them? Well, sure. And he will run out and jump on a lion's back. <laughs> and, I mean, this is, this is amazing. It is a, a world of peace, not only among people, but even among animals. And then nature will be restored. We see this in Isaiah 35. All of nature being restored, the wilderness and the desert will be glad. And the, and the desolate places, the arable, will rejoice and blossom like the crocuses. And it will blossom profusely and rejoice with rejoicing and a shout of joy and the glory of Lebanon will be into it and the majesty of Carmel and Sharon and they will see the glory of the Lord and the majesty of our God and the eyes of the blind will be opened the ears of the deaf unstopped and the lame will leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute will shout for joy and waters will break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert wow and the scorched land like a pool, thirsty ground, springs of water. You know, if, I don't know if you've ever been to Israel, but you go down by the Dead Sea, and there are miles and miles of just nothing. <laughs> to me, it's like southern Utah. I don't know if you've ever been to Bryce Canyon or uh, Zion National Park, in that country where those slot canyons are. I, I mean, southern Utah, I think, has a total of four trees. <laughs> There's nothing there, nothing green. It's just desolate. And God is describing that kind of place, and it becomes just beautiful. It is restored, and I mean, the desert becomes a garden. And the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame leap like a deer. Have you ever seen a deer leap over a fence? <laughs> no problem. Takes it in stride. And... And, and it's, he's describing a whole nother world. In fact, he says we will, we will be living in a garden. In the beginning of the Bible, man was in a garden. And at the end of the Bible, we see man in a garden again. Isaiah 51 and verse 3. Man in a garden. And her wilderness will be made like Eden. And her desert like the garden of the Lord. The desert, the wastelands will be will be beautiful like a garden. And it will be Garden of Eden restored to the world again. And in Isaiah 55, there's great joy. This is all a time of, of incredible happiness. You'll go out with joy, led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth, shouts of joy before you. The trees of the field will clap their hands. This is an amazing picture, isn't it? Instead of the thorn bush... The cypress will come up. Instead of the nettle, the myrtle will come up. Right now, weeds grow naturally. You don't have to plant weeds. That is part of the curse on the ground. But the Bible says it won't be that way in this kingdom when our Lord reigns. Isaiah 65, the wolf and the lamb will graze together, and the lion will eat straw. I mean, these carnivorous animals will... will uh, 
they will become vegetarians. Uh, they're they're going to eat the green and eat the grass, and there will be no more war. It'll be time of peace, Zechariah says in Zechariah 9. No more peace. He said, uh, and the bow of war will be cut off, and no more war, and he will speak peace to the nations. It will be a time of prosperity and peace. God is talking about an amazing time, an amazing era ahead for this world. And in Zechariah 14, he said, Jesus will be the king. He will be king over all the earth. And then in Zechariah 14, 11, the people will live in it and there will no longer be a curse. The curse of sin will be removed from this world. And I mean, this is the world we live in, a world that if, of, of difficulties and struggles and and plagues that sweep the world and and all that we're seeing now and yet the bible is describing a world with no curse of sin a total different world where creation is no longer cursed it is restored to its original order of beauty and and perfection and the animals are changed and joy is the distinctive mark of this era. There's no sickness. There's no blindness. There's no hospitals. There's no nursing homes. That is the what? An amazing time. The kingdom of our God. Well, when is it going to come? When is this going to happen? The people of, when Jesus was here, they thought the kingdom had come. No wonder. They read those passages in the Old Testament about the blind seeing, the lame walking, and the deaf hearing, and, and Jesus performed all those miracles. And so one mother came to Jesus and said, Would you command in your kingdom that these two sons of mine may sit on your right and on your left? She thought the kingdom was right now. So many of his followers thought that in his day. He's coming to throw off the yoke of Rome. He's coming to make Israel great again, much like David made Israel the greatest nation on the face of the earth in his day. Here's one who will sit on the throne of David. Here's a descendant of David. And in Luke 19, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And because they supposed that the kingdom was going to appear immediately, he told them a parable. He told them a story. And the parable, we won't take time to look at it, but the parable was a story about a ruler who was going away. And so he put these people in charge, and he went away on a long journey and was gone a long time. And then he came back and held them accountable and rewarded them for their service. And he was telling them that the kingdom is not now that the king will go away and the king will come back. He taught us to pray for his kingdom in what we call the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will is certainly not being done now on the earth as it is in heaven, but it will be during his kingdom at a whole different time, a whole different era. There was a longing in the heart's of the disciples for this kingdom so much so that one of their questions they asked him just before he left this earth he said lord is it is at this time you are restoring the kingdom to israel you can just hear the longing in their voices jesus didn't say oh there's no kingdom no no jesus said it's not for you to know the time or the seasons but you shall be my witnesses well when is this kingdom when is it going to be we don't know the exact time, but we do know this. It will be when he comes back. For he promised, I will come again. I go to prepare a place for you, but I will come again. And when he comes back, that's when the kingdom is. We read in Revelation, if you've been with us the last few Sundays, of the last seven years. It's called the tribulation, when evil has its zenith of power and those are, those are covered in Re- Revelation 6 through 18. It's seven years, a week of years. Uh, not a week of days, but a week of years, seven years. And then at the end of those seven years, in Revelation 19, we read, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. He who sat on it is called faithful and true. Jesus Christ comes back to conquer evil and to set up his kingdom. 
And on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is when the kingdom begins. This is when the kingdom is established. When the king returns. When the Prince of Peace comes back, that's when this world will know peace. When Jesus Christ sets up his kingdom. Isaiah talked about it. And here's a verse that we look at at Christmas time because it first refers to his first coming. For a child will be born to us. That speaks of his humanity. A son will be given to us. That speaks of his deity. And then there's at least a 2,000 year gap after that semicolon. And the government will rest upon his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. From then on and forevermore. What a kingdom. Our Lord will rule and reign. Job went through a time of suffering and difficult time, even suffered far worse than than we are with this virus. And one thing that encouraged him, Job said, I know, I know that my Redeemer lives and at the last he will take his stand on the earth. And even after my skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh in my resurrected body, is what he's saying, I will see God. Jesus will come back. He will stand on this earth, Job said. I will see him again. The angel Gabriel spoke to Mary. He said, don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You shall conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. Jesus is a king. He will set up his kingdom. He must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Jesus will conquer all evil. The devil and evil will be conquered. Jesus will set up his kingdom when he comes back. The what is a wonderful kingdom. The when is when Jesus comes back on his return. Well, how long is this kingdom? Well, we just saw that it lasts forever. But wait a minute. Revelation chapter 20, he comes back in Revelation chapter 19. And Revelation chapter 20 tells us about his kingdom. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven and holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was given to them and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. A thousand years. This is the only place in the Bible where the duration of his kingdom is given. It says six times a thousand years. Six times. It gives the duration of his kingdom. Well, I thought you said it lasted forever. The Bible says his kingdom is everlasting. That's true. But the earthly part of his kingdom is a thousand years. It's a millennium. And that's where we get that thousand years from the word millennium milli a thousand annum years and and so the devil is bound can you imagine a thousand years without the devil Uh, the devil is the great tempter he comes to steal to kill and to destroy no devil how wonderful He has tempted man. He has devoured man. He has destroyed man. He has broken homes. He has broken lives. He has broken hearts. He has caused all kinds of hurt and destruction. He is the enemy of God and the enemy of man. But during this millennium, it'll be a reign of righteousness. This is the earthly part of his kingdom. Revelation Chapter 19, he returns. He defeats evil. He sets up his kingdom. Revelation 20 tells us the duration of his earthly kingdom. 
Revelation 21 and 22 describe heaven, our eternal home. Before he takes us to his eternal home, we have the honeymoon, a thousand years here on the earth, and the bride of Christ, and then we are taken to our eternal home. And so, how long? The earthly kingdom is a thousand years. His kingdom is forever. His eternal kingdom is forever. And so, what do we have? The kingdom of our Lord, which is beyond what I could even begin to describe to you. And when is it? When he returns. How long is it? A thousand years are on the earth, but forever. Well, who is involved in this kingdom? Revelation 5 says, You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. He's speaking of those who have said yes to Jesus. He is speaking of those believers, those who put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul got a glimpse of this kingdom. Paul suffered so much for the cause of Christ, but he said this, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed to us. We will see his glory. We will see our Lord in his glory. And he will say, well done, good slave. Because you've been faithful in a very little thing, you are to be in authority over ten cities. We will help him rule. One day Peter asked a question to Jesus. <laughs> I just love Peter's boldness, don't you? I mean, I mean, Peter, you never had to wonder what he was thinking. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, he just said it. And Peter said, Behold, we've left everything and followed you. What then will there be for us? <laughs> What's in it for us, Lord? Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, you who have followed me in the generation when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Peter's going to help Jesus reign. The apostles, we will be involved. When Jesus sits on his glorious throne, he is King of kings and Lord of lords. He will set up his kingdom. A whole new world with Garden of Eden conditions restored to it. An amazing world. Just like I liked having a wonderful time and preparing something exciting for the kids to look forward to, a vacation, a getaway, a fun time just for us as a family. As a father, I loved, as a provider, I loved preparing that. I just want you to know our great God, our Heavenly Father, is preparing for your future. And it is glorious. It is amazing. Evil will be defeated. Our Lord will triumph. He will sit on His glorious throne. This whole world will be changed. Nature will be changed. Animals will, ch will be changed. It will be a world of peace and prosperity. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow. Of those who are in heaven, those on earth and those under the earth and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Every knee will bow, every tongue will will confess one day that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. My challenge to you is why wait till then? Make that confession now. Say yes to Jesus now. This wonderful teaching of the millennial reign of our Lord this wonderful teaching of the kingdom, this kingdom that he told us to pray for, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This longing that he put in, into our hearts, it will come. 
It is the heart of Old Testament prophecy. All through the Old Testament, God had the prophets see down through the corridors of time and see this wonderful time when Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, would reign. Eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared. God has prepared something beyond what we could ever describe to you. He has paid for your salvation, and he has made it possible for you to be a part of his forever family and for you to be victorious along with him. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to invite Jesus to be your personal Savior. Just pray that prayer. Just let him know, Lord, I am a sinner, as your Bible says, for we're all sinners. We've all sinned against a holy God. And I need forgiveness. And Jesus made it possible through his shed blood on the cross. He paid for my sins. I trust him as my Savior. You can say that to God. You can put your faith in God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of eternal life. I pray that no one would turn their back on such an amazing, so great salvation. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I just want to say God bless you. I, I just am so happy for you. I want you to indicate and let us know. Just click on there and let us know. We want to pray for you. We want to encourage you. God bless you and your decision for Christ.